Okay, whenever we do the class, uh, the object oriented, okay, we need to define this UML or we call it the unified modeling language. So you can design this class diagram, then it will be helpful for you to make the class. So for example, I have this class diagram. Then how can I write this class diagram into the Python program? So I can make another class. Uh, before I make the complicated class, let me make the simple class first. I will make a new class. Okay. And now I will define a constructor. So a constructor means we, whenever we want to generate an object, there should be a constructor to indicate the first value or the initial value. In the class of Python, we need to define the constructor with init. So init means initial. Okay. And again, we need to define self. It is to indicate where is the object. After we have the self, we can define what parameter that you want to put for example i want to design the person name so the person name will be the parameter that i want to send into this class so i will define self dot name which is the variable name or the attribute name it will be equal to the name given in this parameter. Maybe you can have like P name, something like this. This is okay. So P name means is the variable, the person name that you want to use in your class. But this name is the name given by the user when they specify the object. Now, you can have another function. For example, you just have to say hi and yourself. Rain, uh, how are you? Now, I would like to mention the person name so i can call using the self self means this is the object of the particular person and i want to call name okay so by using this one I can create another object. Now, if you create like this one, it will be error. Why? It mentioned that in the init, there is one required positional argument, or we can say there is one argument that we need to fill in, which is name. We already defined this name. In the previous one, we don't have any init. We don't have any constructor. So we don't need to define name. But here, because I want to put a name. And this name will be in a variable p name. So later I can use this name to do the greeting. Okay. So in this case, I need to change this with one parameter 
let's say when I so the person one now the name is Bernard and if I call P1 dot if I want to call the method say hi so if you press the tab you can see the options the first is P name P name is the instance or the variable say hi is a function so let's say I want to call the say hi then how are you this is the name that I define in this class Okay. Now let's make a more complex class. So I will make according to this class type. Class person. It means I have the class person and I can define two variables. How can I define two variables? Yeah, actually the easy one, okay, the easy one is you can use the constructor and then you have the two variable name and its. And then you can define, let's say the name is the P name. And let's say the it is the person it's like this. And then okay, you already have two variables, name and it's. Now you need to define another function, get name, get it's, and set input. So we have the def get name. Let's say I want to print name, self, key name. And then I want to get its self. I want to print self, key its. And I want to have another set info. I have self, I have name, and then I have its. So it will change the self p name equals to name and then I will change the self p h according to the h okay so in this case I have three methods these three methods equal to this one to three methods and then I have two variables name and x according to this one have to so this is the simple uh, class in Python when you have this kind of class diagram. So whenever we have the object, okay, it means it is regarding as one person. Let's say you have the table. Then person one is one row. Person two is another person. Okay. And we can use the dot to access the map. Okay. So what is the difference between the first, this one, and the previous example without the name? 
if we thought the name we don't have the constructor okay. in this case we have constructor so we can define the variable in the beginning when you create the class so the argument is automatically embedded into object so the name is embedded into the object but there is no storage to maintain the argument so there is no storage to maintain the one that's why this we call it as the object so what i mentioned to you about the constructor okay, a user can create an instance of the person class using this way and yeah i i mentioned to you the init it is the Init, initiate okay, or the constructor this result in a call to the special name init method that serve as the constructor for the class and in this case we have one variable name and then we have the function say hi it is the function to do something related with this class. So the init, the primary responsibility is to establish the state of a newly created person object with appropriate instance variables. So if you have only one, you can define one. If you have two, you will define two. If you have three and so on, you can define many variables. Okay. Whenever you do this kind of data member, okay. what does it mean by data member? The data member means the data that you want to de design in your object. In this case, uh, the person we have name, okay. we can have age. So you can define in this init and you can design it in this self dot some kind of variables. And in the method, you need to again put the self because it is necessary to indicate where is this variable are located. If it is self or key one, then the computer know that every variable for key key one it can be called in this method. So in this case, the person have one method and have one argument okay, for this one. So the method means, this is the method. We need to use the self. Please remember this one self. It is to call for every variables that you have defined here. If you have name, you have age, you have address, you have phone number, then you can access those variables using this sum. Whenever we call the data member in a method, we need to include self identifier such as self dot name. Okay. So just recalling this person object with argument. If we use this two, then it means we have two objects. And if we call the method, then we call the method including the variable name. And this variable will be saved into the variable name in this data member. Okay, I have another example. <coughs> I have a class of student, and this student class, we have three data members student name, student city, and score. And I have 
four functions or four methods. Get student name, get student city, get student score, and then I can set the student score. Okay. So the class consists of two arguments in the constructor. Okay. And there should be three data members. And there are four methods. Okay. So there are two arguments in the constructor. However, we have three data members. Okay. It is possible. And we have one, two, three, four function or four methods. The variable score will be initialized as zero when there is no behavior info. So at the first time, every object will have the score equals to zero. We can set another score later. Okay. So I can create object later like this one. If the student one is the S one, then I can have the student name, student city, and a score. If I define another student, then I have S two, and I can also define again the student name, student city, and student score. Okay, let's see how we can create this one. Okay, I will. Just skip this one. So let's make another class. Class student. Okay, you can copy and paste this one, or yeah, if you want to type, it's okay. I think for the time efficiency, you can copy and paste. Now, this is the constructor, and we have for functions. When we want to make our first data, the data should have two data members, or two arguments. Why? It should have two arguments because we have two parameters okay. so let's say if i have s1 equals to student b what happened if i have only one argument then it will be error because it should have at least two arguments so I can specify, for example, the student B, the city is Yongin. Then it is fine. I have I have student two. Let's say I have the name is C and then the city is Seoul. Okay, I have S1 and S2. So I want to check S1, what kind of function that I can call. You can press the dot and then you can press the tab. Now you can see there are many options. You can get the student city, you can get the student name, you can get the student score. You can get only the instance score. You can get the set student score. You can call the student city, you can call the student name. Okay. So once you have a lot of data members, once you have a lot of methods, then all will be listed here. Now, let's say I want to get the student name. So S1 name is B. I want to get the S2 get student name. So the student name of S2 is C. So I want to know the get student city. Then the S1 student city is Jungi. I want to know the S2 
get student city. So the student city of S2 is so. What about the score? S1, I want to call the get student score. The score is zero. Why? Because every object will be initialized as zero. Okay, so this is the initial value. This is the default value for every object. So if you want to change the score, then you need to do something S1 dot set. You can set the student score. Let's say I want to put the 80, for example. And then after I do this one, I can call again, get the student score. So now, the score of that student is 80. What is the meaning by this set student score? This is a function. If you look at this one, this is a function and it has two parameters. The first parameter is sum. Okay, self is necessary in every function in that class. And then I have score. Score means any number that will be inputted by the user. So this score will be the new value of the variable score or self.score that has been defined here. So the self.score will be updated with the new value score. Okay. So let's say I want to update more. Uh, S1, I want to update to score to 90. Then I can call again, get student score. Now it becomes 90 because I just updated the score to 90. If you want to get the student score as S2, it is still zero. So you can again set the score, let's say 50. Then I can have the S2 get student score as 50. Okay. So this name, it depends on you. You can define the function name by yourself. So when you access the student name, you will get the student. When you access the student, get student city, you will get the city. It depends how you define the variable then the functions. So the student with uh, object instantiation with score. So while accessing the score, the result is zero. So you need to set the score if it is required. So if you follow the sequence, when you get the score, it is zero. When you set the score to 80, nothing will happen. But actually, Python will update the variable from 0 to 80. And then when you get the score, it will become 80. Okay. In Python, uh, you can make the object from a file. So let's suppose I have odd event file uh, and I want to make an object in a file. So in many cases, objects can be created in a file and Python file can import other files. 
or we can say we can import the object to execute functions. Objects in a file can be executed by calling the file name. Alternatively, the file can contain main method so that some functions will run once the file is called. So I, I will not use the main method at this moment. Maybe let's use the different file. Okay, let me teach you how to create a Python file. As you might know, our file now is in the Jupyter Notebook with the IPYNB. This is the extension of Jupyter Notebook. If you want to create a Python file, means you can click plus here. You can click plus. So last time we create a text file, but now let's create a Python file. So this Python file, you can create the text file. It is still the same. Oh, you can also use the Python file if you want. It will automatically create a new file, and the file name is untitled and you can rename this one let's say i want to rename it to hot event okay so create the text file or you can create the python file and then you can rename it to hot under bar event py and then let's do something with this code Okay, so this is the code that I gave to you. In this code, I want to check what event. Maybe it's better for you to write. Okay. Okay, let me write. It is a function to check what event. And then if and remainder two equals equal zero, it means if the number can be divided by two, then it is even. But if it is not, then print put. So I make a simple function in the file put even the two one. Okay, please save file so you can control s okay or you can just save okay save all okay. now let's go back to the Jupyter notebook i have the file name is old event so i can import the file import what if the file name it is what event so any python file with dot py you can import it into the Jupyter notebook and then you can do something what event it is the name of the file and then i can do with dot so I can access any of the function in that. So I have one function which is check what event. And then we know that this function contains one parameter, okay, one argument. We can define what is the number. Let's say I want to put two. Then it will show the result event. So in this case, yeah, you don't need to write your code in the Jupyter notebook. So as long as you have the dot py, you can access the py and then you can do something like the object oriented.
we can have both event check both event for example three then it is odd number okay The other way to access the file, you can create option. Okay. So here, I also show you how can we create the object. Let's say I have O1. O1 is the odd event. And then I want to use the function, check odd event. Okay, now I can do O1 and I can define the argument. What argument that I want to say? Let's say I want to give the argument 5. Then it will show you the result code. I want to check the argument 6. So I know the result is event. So if you have this kind of source code, you can just extract it into your Jupyter notebook and you can use it as you want. Okay. So I use the example from the book. There is one class, they call it credit card. In this credit card, they have five data members, customers, bank, account, balance, limit. Okay. So some people, they mention that it is good if you make the data member starting with underbar 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 so you can distinguish between the variables and for example the method so if everything with the underbar so it will be the variable or the data member so if there is nothing in the first then it means this is the method so we have seven methods get customers so i want to know who is the customer get bank i want to know what is the bank name get account i want to know the bank account id get balance i want to know the balance of the person get limit i want to know the limit of the credit card charge so how many or how much the person do the charge so according to one uh, argument price and then whether the person will make the payment so we have one argument amount how much payment that you want to do for the, the credit card so we can have this example We have class credit card. We have the constructor. So the constructor we have one, two, three, four variables. So there's a definition or description here. We can create a new credit card instance. So the initial balance is zero. And we have the customer, bank, account, and limit. So the customer is the name of the customer, bank is the name of the bank, account is the account identifier, and the credit limit is the limit of the credit card. And we define every of these data member with the self. Self dot underbar customer, it will be equal to the customer name. So the customer, it will go here. Bank, it will go to this variable. ACND it will go to this variable, limit it will go to this variable, and we have balance. So we have many methods. The method get customer it is to get the
the name of the customer. Get bank, it is to return the bank name. Get account, to return the account. Get limit, to return the limit of the credit card. And get balance, to return the balance. Charge, it means when you swipe the card, then there will be the, the charge will be given in the credit card and then you will check whether it has the upper limit or it is above the limit or not. So if it is more than the limit, of course we need to stop. We cannot exit the limit for the credit, for the credit card. But if it is still under the limit, you can just put the price into the bank. And let's say the person want to make the payment. Okay, then the person can make some amount of payment and then the balance can be deducted or it can be reduced. Okay. So I will introduce the main method. Uh, you can access the in the e-class I give you one file or oh, I have three files actually so I put it into the folder here I put into the folder CH03 so you can open this one so this is the Code. credit card we have the constructor we have the method no. and you can see here we have the main method the main method means I would like to execute this code in this uh, this is the code that I will execute to run this thing okay. So there are some ways to do this one. Uh, you can execute. Yeah, the easy way is you can just copy and paste this one to the Jupyter notebook, or you can use the way that I mentioned to you. You can use the import, and then you can execute it. Okay. So I just want to show you that this is the code given by the author of the book. With this data, so this is the main method. In this data, they have the a pen. Do you still remember a pen? We want to have one more element in the list. So in this case, the wallet is empty list and we want to put one element. What is the element? The element is an object. This object is credit card. It shows one, two, three, four. I will add another object with another four attributes. I will also add another object with another four attributes. So in the wallet, I have three elements and then yeah I, this one is just a kind of uh, kind of transaction okay this is random transaction it shows the loop from one until 16 so there are 16 transactions and for the first they want to give the value or the price they will charge the price and then for the wallet one they want to charge two times of the value and for the wallet three uh, two they want to charge three times of the value so this is a kind of just charging the, the transaction for every credit card and then we want to know how 
is the last state of this customer. So the customer one is John Bowman, the bank. Get bank is the collateral for their setting, and then the account, get account, and then get limit, and then I can get the balance. So if the balance is higher than 100, then let's make the thing. Because yeah, maybe they have some rules after you have the balance more than 100, do the payment. So this is the result. Okay, uh, I will explain more about this one. Now I think it's the time to do the learning check. Okay. I will stop the class.